So hi, Cameron. Hello. Hello. We, we are here on the UVI booth, and you're going to show us the uh, augmented orchestra, right? Augmented orchestra, yeah. This is the latest and greatest soundware package from UVI. It is a lot of different things. It is a orchestral library, you know, all your conventional. But what this consists of is two separate parts, and each of these parts has two different layers. So there's four, I guess, generators in total is the better way to think of it. These can be mixed between A and B, or one and two rather, so we have A and B, A1, A2, B1, B2. These can be blended, so this is just cross-fading between these layers. Of course, you can modulate this, you can map it to a controller. But within each of these voices, we have a hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different sounds and more importantly different articulations so if you wanted to use this as more of a traditional orchestral library you can do things like the ensembles there's things like a full string ensemble there are split ensembles if you wanted like high brass and low strings but where this becomes a lot more interesting is the twist it generates on an orchestra augmenting it so to speak so flipping into here, we have this much deeper interface of modulation and things like this. So you can see, for example, on the amplitude, we have different modulations, velocity, mod wheel, LFOs. These LFOs can be very complex and interesting shapes. Of course, you can time sync these. You can get them up well into the audio range, uh, up to 20 hertz, which is really, really quick. We also have dual arpeggiators. So these come with a variety of presets. There's also phrasing modes, which allows you to use the arpeggiator almost as a sequencer and build tracks, I guess, in a way through this. So this is more of a traditional patch, but if we flip back into here, we have things like the orchestra, more orchestral sounds, natural being kind of what you would expect. And then we get into things like sequences. So. This is sort of a traditional ensemble augmented with some effects and processing, which takes this library and turns it. The tension is what makes, there we go. And this is also a key split patch, so you can see here we can split this across the keyboard. Uh, another good example of this might be... So we can really go like much further than the yeah. traditional kind of uh, and ensembled that, orchestra. That's line. really where this gets fun. Uh, and we'll, I'll show you one of those patches after this, because once you see where this takes it, that's where I think to me it's not best to think of this as another orchestral library. It's just kind of a collection of sounds and features that you can do whatever you want with to make, you know, traditional orchestral things, orchestral things with a little bit of a twist, you know, maybe to give kind of a better take on a compositional gig or whatever, or totally go left field and just destroy these sounds with tons of effects and modulation and whatnot. Uh, this patch, kind of a full performance from a note, really, bring it. Moving back uh, into something a bit more crazy. Let's go into Eclipse. So this is in the electronic sound set. So we're going now outside of the orchestra, but more of a modern take on an orchestral score, maybe, you know, big synth lines and things like that. So here we've got different synthesizers as well as kind of a, a waveform to pull from. So building off of this, whoop.
Okay. Building off of this, we could get into something like maybe the pulses category, where this is going to start to combine all these ideas of organic and electronic sound sources, the effects, the dual layer, arpeggiator. And if we dive into one of these tabs here, you'll start to see the modulation being used. So here we have a filter, multi-mode filter being modulated with different things. We've got arpeggiators running, only one of them in this case. Over in the effects section, we have different effects. So these are sends, these are our global effects. So this is an orchestra, you know, but augmented. <laughs> With the quality of these sound sources, you can take these and kind of push them way low and generate these massive, just, I don't know, instant win sort of toolkits for yourself. And of course, we could go in and start changing. So you can really get, like, you could, if, if you were a kind of uh, low level user, you could, yeah. you could just use the presets, but obviously exactly. you can really get in there. And, and the nice thing is, is like within the arpeggiator, for example, we have different presets. So if you like this sound, but maybe not necessarily the flow of it. And I'm just, you know, sustaining a note here. Going into maybe one more. Let's go into maybe the ambient section. So do you know um, how the the kind of original samples were recorded? Is there any, was there any uh, like special processes done there? Uh, in some of the categories, yeah. So we have the traditional stuff, it, it, and it kind of builds from like the stuff you would expect into the weirder side. So we have the orchestra stuff, then we're moving into experimental solo. So these are techniques like, you know, lightly bowed harmonics or muted strings or things like that. Tape orchestra is an orchestra recorded to tape. It has that kind of more warm, crunchy, warbly, lo-fi aesthetic. String machines being string synthesizers, modeled sounds, synth stacks, like layered things. Textures, which are more tonal or atonal sort of things that complement different layers. And then we get into FM sounds and waveforms, so individual raw waveforms to build a synth patch from on top of this. So in this folder, we're making use of pretty much all of these, actually. So we've got strings, some synth layers, and then just a pure noise oscillator. And of course, we've got other things here as well, like small sections. So if you're looking for something maybe a bit more intimate, you can have these smaller sections that are set up to function a little bit more low key. You know, it's not always the big bad, like, ah, orchestra stuff. We can have something like this that's a bit more. And of course, we have all the other things we could do building this into something like Falcon. So not only can we play with this library, but we can even go in if we run it inside of Falcon and access the guts of it. So this is everything running inside of Augmented Orchestra. And if we wanted to really take these samples up to a different place, we have full access to Falcon's effects, Falcon's modulators, and Falcon's mapping controls, even allowing you to maybe layer this with some of your own sounds and then maybe make like one layer of all this MPE responsive. Of course, you can build up multiple patches inside of Falcon and have them to different channels, different outputs. So yeah, this is a really 
fun take on an orchestral thing, I think. And it's accessible as just, you know, if you want to walk through the library, get some scoring stuff done, you know, work with some interesting sounds that go beyond, I guess, what we're used to with orchestral libraries, getting more into like the modern sensibilities of design sounds and interesting textures. It's a fun way to explore that. And if you're more into the deeper side of maybe using this as a sonic platform, you can, of course, combine these sounds, modulate these sounds, and do whatever you want with it. So that is Augmented Orchestra in a nutshell, I guess. Brilliant. So um, what's the uh, kind of price on this? I would have to double check on that because it's been a moment. Okay. Uh, Lori, or someone. Price on Augmented Orchestra, I forgot. Sorry? The price on Augmented uh, Orchestra? $2.99. $2.99, okay. So the price on Augmented Orchestra, $2.99. That, of course, includes everything inside of it. Falcon is sold separately, but Augmented Orchestra does run inside of the free UVI workstation. Workstation allows you to access everything we've seen within Augmented Orchestra, but not the deeper side of Falcon with the, I mean, modular flow of like whatever else you want to do. But the fact that it does run in Falcon really lets you go insane with what you can do with this library. Uh, as well, it is worth mentioning, it's available as part of Sonic Pass, which is UVI's new subscription service, which includes this, it includes Falcon, it includes all of the soundware, so that's, uh, I, I don't even know, it's over a thousand somewhere, uh, synthesizers, drum kits, everything else, of course, those all run inside of Falcon, which is included in Sonic Pass, so that's any of these sound banks and libraries you could use inside of this, and it comes with all of UVI's effects. So the delays, like Relayer, uh, Spark Verb, which is like phenomenal sounding, uh, Shade, which is a EQ effect, very poorly put. Uh, it's a really creative filtering plugin more than anything. And everything else UBI makes. And as soon as something new is released, you get it on day one included in that. And that comes in at $24 a month or 24 euros a month. And that's several terabytes of stuff uh, it's a lot of content and of course you know with how a lot of these libraries are designed and stuff you can also make them interact together in some fun ways with like you know layering some arpeggiated synth stuff with augmented orchestra and then adding some of the creative falcon expansions with something like richard devine's uh, sound set and then running all that through spark verb or shade or anything else it's a extremely powerful ecosystem for 24 dollars a month um, of course, it is worth mentioning as well, this doesn't affect the other UVI sales, so it's not going subscription only. I know that's a big thing people are very curious about. So both options exist. If you want to get into the UVI ecosystem and explore everything, that's a much more affordable way to do it. But if you want to buy stuff outright, you can certainly can do that. And of course, you can mix and match. Maybe you've got a couple libraries and want to explore what else they have to offer, and then you can try that out, get everything else, and I guess, in a way, think of it as sort of a trial yeah brilliant in a weird way <laughs> excellent well cameron thank you very yeah, much for thank speaking you. to us thank you